Hey everybody, hopefully you enjoy this week's show. Captain Richard Bradley, my longtime friend and charter captain for about 30 years, joined me in the studio. We talked about a lot of things that used to go on that are actually starting to happen again. So hopefully you guys and gals will enjoy this show right here on Florida Space Coast. Welcome. It's another edition of Catch a Memory Outdoors right here on WWBC 1510 AM. We appreciate you guys and gals tuning in every Saturday to see what's going on up and down the Space Coast. Right here in the studio, I have my one and only special friend, Captain Richard Bradley. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> I don't know. You got me up so early. Does Joe <laughs> Rogan get his people are, up this early? Are, yeah, of course he does. Uh, I got to get them prepped and ready, right? But he has cigars and stuff for him, you know. So where's yeah, I, that's I, after breakfast. Uh, okay. <laughs> 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 That'll be after breakfast. May I tell you what? It's going to be a fun time. If you guys and gals want to get involved with us here at the show, uh, give us a call, 321-632-1000, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. That's 632-1000. You can get us right here at our Coco studio. Um, we are transmitting live, so uh, if you're on the water this morning and you're catching some fish, give us a call. Let us know what you're using. Um, you don't have to give us exact GPS coordinates, you know, but, you know, that's after the show. You can do that after the show, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Richard, it's been uh, it's been a hot one so far. It is the hottest summer, but I, you know, I'm wondering if it's if it's our it's age. Me. It's me. We're just getting older yeah. and crustier. It's, and, it's affecting me. I, and I tell you yeah. what, I, I, my skin is paying the price. That's one of the reasons why I've kind of pulled back the last couple of years. Is just cancer and everything else is coming up on me. It's kind of tough. You know, well, it's, it's, you gotta, it's interesting because you know, you and I both have been in the sun our whole lives. We've been guides the majority of our of, of our, our, our lives and and, and before that we were out. on the water yeah and we were surfing and we were mm -hmm. playing sports outdoors and we were you know as kids it was you know from the time you're about five years old on you know mom kicked you out of the house and just you know i don't want to see you till dark basically and uh, yeah and you know, and so if you don't gen we're x, gonna have baby, a, gen x representing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if you stay in the house, I'm going to find something for you to do. And you're like, no, I'm getting out of exactly. here. Exactly. You stick around in the house and mom had you dusting and cleaning toilets and yeah, all the oh, things was, that you didn't want to be doing on a Saturday morning, right? So uh, it, it is It is weird. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm almost feel like sometimes when I get in the sun and I'm not covered up, it's, I feel like a vampire now. It's like, ah. You know? so, so look at my face. Oh, yeah. You see that? Are you doing? Oh, yeah. You're fried. Yeah. And you, I had my 70 block on yesterday. And your buff. I had my hat. I had my hoodie. I took all the buffs out of the boat, all my extras. I took all the buffs out of my truck, and I did laundry. And of all the things to forget, you okay? You forgot your buff. I mean, it's like forgetting your fishing poles anymore. I forgot oh, it's, it's my awful. buff. And this is with 70 block on, but no buff over the top of it, which is the way I normally roll. Uh -huh. I normally put the 70 on, wear the buff as well. And so I feel like I'm protecting myself as best as I can against the sun. Do you, do you do the same thing I do? I have right next to my toothbrush in the morning when, when I, and, you know, everything else that you got to do right mm -hmm. there. I put my sunscreen. Go straight on. I literally have Gina does it. She puts a, bu she puts a stack of so, buffs. So it's get up, make the coffee, throw a little, you know, throw a couple of, uh, you know, hard-boiled eggs or something down my throat. Right. Take my vitamins, brush my teeth. Put on, you know, comb, comb my hair, put on my sunblock, and out the door I go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's, it's, it's the all same it's all every day. your sun protection is now is yeah. is is paramount. It's right yeah. there. It's like I, you know, it's like I'm putting makeup on. I feel like a, you know, like like my wife, you know, whenever whenever we're going out to dinner, you know, she's got to touch up a little bit. I feel like I have to put on my makeup, my my sunblock. Sunblock, every day. like you know, if you start putting lipstick on, brother, you're. You're, yeah, you know, you're not going to see that yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. No. I'll <laughs> hey, you call know, you out on it. <laughs> you better. You better. <laughs> hey, let's go to the phone lines. Looks like Orson's on the line this morning. Good morning, Orson. Hey, Jim. I just want to be the first guy to call in because I'm usually like the last guy to call in at the end of the show. So I'm, I'm changing things up today. <laughs> Throwing a new game plan oh. out there for this for this week, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. No, I wanted to call you. See, um, man, things are firing down here in the Thousand Islands. Uh pretty deep schools of bait and i mean the tarpon and jacks are, are just blowing things up every morning and afternoon i didn't know if you've been out here and what size fish you're seeing but uh <clears throat> it's pretty thick i'm seeing tarpon probably in the 30 to 40 pound range but 
you know, I guess those are the two, Kyle. I think I saw a bigger ones well, the other day. The fun size. Yeah, in the, in the Thousand Islands, uh, in that basin, they were rolling, and they were. I was like, ones, "Wow, huh? that's a nice size tarpon right there." Yeah. 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 Well, it's that time of the year. I mean, July is normally when they start to show up in good numbers and kind of stay through the mid-August time frame, and then all of a sudden they they slow down. I think they I think they leave and go out to the beach because the mullets start running, you know, around the first of September. I don't know what, you know, I, I was coming out. I didn't have any bait yet. I, um, I picked up some people behind that, that were staying in the canals back there. Uh huh. So then I came out and when I was coming through that basin, I was like, holy cow, look at the tarpon. Yeah. And they were, and there were a couple of them busting. A couple of nice ones. Yeah. So Orson, are, are you, are you getting a chance to get out and fish on those fish or are you just seeing them behind your house? Uh, I've been out in the islands back, uh, you know, like the golf course area. Yeah. Kind of back mm-hmm. there, you know, just putting around with the trolling motor, just drifting the boat. Um, you know, so I haven't been able to hook up a tarpon yet, but the jacks have been pretty darn aggressive. You know, on just about, you know, I've been throwing like little top water at them. Right, um, right. They've, they've been blowing it up. But, you know, what I noticed, though, is um, I don't know if there's any correlation, but, you know, the water temp around here was, you know, 80, 88, 89 degrees. Yes. And now it's up to about 90, 91. And it did seem like the action, it did seem like it's kicked up another notch. I don't know, you know, I know it's not necessarily that's a, a direct link, but um, I don't know. I mean, the water's over 90 degrees. I mean, it's it's hot, and the bioluminescence is, like, firing like crazy. And it seems like the fishing is really turned on compared to maybe last month. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's, I mean, that's all That's all positive news. Obviously, it, when it gets too warm, we have a little... Slowdown, you know, usually. Yeah, normally we have a slowdown, but... You know, we've got the way the moon is right now. The what's interesting is the midday bite is the best bite right now at mid morning to midday bite with the way that the soul lunar tables are. Yesterday, um, I pulled up, I looked at the school of snook, we threw croakers into them. Nah, didn't want that. Threw a couple of artificials in there. Nah, they didn't want that. Okay, let's go try the next one. And we run up, run up the beach a little bit, find another school. Nah, they didn't want anything either run way up the beach and so water temp on the beach is now 85 86 in the bite it's about 87 degrees i round the tip of the cape and i start running north we're looking for tarpon sharks you know spinner sharks jacks whatever it happens to be um get up the beach and the temperature starts dropping and by the time i got to so from the tip of the cape to the blue origin pad what's that half a a mile mile, if that yeah. Temperature drops from 85 down to 81. I continue going north. I'm like, oh, we got something going on. Mm-hmm. I continue going north. By the time I got to the ULA pad, what we call the Delta pad. Yep. Um, 75 degrees. Uh-oh. Yeah. I'm not, now I'm not seeing. That's like the winter time. Yeah, now What's I'm not seeing, now I'm not seeing, now I'm not seeing any bait. Yeah, I'm yeah. not seeing any bait. I, I have run out of the bait, if you will. Okay? Yeah. I'm not seeing any bumper. You know, this horn belly's popping. I'm not seeing anything anymore. Um, there was some spotted rays, spotted eagle rays and things that back down south of me. I go another maybe quarter mile. I, I'm just, just past the beach wreck, you know, that, that one that's right in right. the surf that sticks up. I get just past that, and I'm like, man, it was – the tide was high enough and the swell was low enough that we could fish it. We stop, start throwing some baits up there, see if there's any snook around that beach wreck up there. And I'm just kind of, you know, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the swell because it's, you know. It's, oh, yeah, you got it right in there. Or you can get tossed yeah, up. Yeah, you got to keep an eye on it. So I'm, I'm maintaining, you know, my position in the boat and my guys are casting. And as we sat there, we sat there 15 minutes. And the water temperature dropped all the way down to 73.7. As we're sitting there. So the cold water was pushing into the beach somewhere north of us and then rolling southward down the beach. Right, right. So now I'm I'm like, well, we're we're just, you know, we're not gonna have any success here. We need to go. It's 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 time to go back south. Let's get back down to some warmer temperatures. So we're running back south. Where I'd stopped before, I'd seen some mullet in the surf and I stopped there. And it was, you know, that 75, 76-degree range. It's now 74. 
So the cold water is, you know, continuing to push moving south quick. down the beach, and it's moving fairly quick. I'm kind of surprised at it. So long story short, uh, you know, there's a lot of different temperatures out there right now. Um, and if you guys find yourselves getting into a cold water scenario, get back to that leading edge of it because the leading edge that is where that push is at. And, and anywhere from about 78 or 79 degrees up to about 82 is where the majority of the life it was yesterday, if you will. So it's interesting that you said it's 91 in the in the lagoon system, but the fish are not. the The deep water, the deep the deeper yeah. water, must be staying cool enough that they're they're coming up through it to feed and then dropping back down. The redfish that we caught the other day, or yeah, some... they're up on the flats, Jim. They're they're uh, they're like they're in the hot water, so maybe yeah. they're out. Maybe they they spend more time out in the deeper water, and then they just come in and and feed like crazy, you know. And I want to tell you, like, there's one tip you gave me that I think really helped me when it came to tarpon fishing. And it was something I never, ever thought of. But I remember one time you told me, like, Orson, turn off your electronics. They can hear your depth finder. <laughs> yes, if yep. If you're out pursuing them. And and you're right. Like, I've, I've kind of, I mean, again, it's, it's hard to put PC things all together. But, you know, now I turn off my depth finder. And it does seem like I get can get closer to the fish. Oh, yeah. Than I normally, when I did in the past, I thought it was fascinating, like, they can actually hear that thing chirping. Yeah, tar- tarpon in particular are are extremely wary about your your sounder, and so uh, that's and that's where a lot of guys don't catch. You know, they're in the fish. They'll tell you, "Man, I was in the fish all day, but we couldn't catch them." Um, we see them rolling around us, but they never came close enough to the boat to say get into the bait spread or whatever it happens to be, or within casting distance. And that's what it is. It's they're very, very picky when it comes to, you know, sounds in the water that aren't normal sounds. The other thing is changing the frequency of your motor. So if you're approaching, and this is any school of fish, as you know, Richard. Oh, yeah. This is any school of fish. As you're approaching a school of redfish, let's say on your trolling motor, if you're changing the, the, the speed of the motor up and that down. That messes them up. Woo! That's, I mean, you might as well, you might as well just jump into water and do a cannonball because you're announcing that you're, you're there. Oh yeah, you know it, it is. It is amazing to me to see what fish do. We used to have when we had the the schools of redfish, regular redfish, right. not not the big breeding schools, but you couldn't get near them with a with a depth finder. And I was and I learned that early on. And I I told I tell people why you got your depth finder on. You're polling, you know, and you and these fish can hear you and they're they're reacting yeah. to that. So yeah, you gotta you gotta be real careful with that. Well, you know, hopefully hopefully that will continue. Some of the things that I tell you, Orson, will continue to help you out, buddy. I appreciate the call in this morning though, and let us know that uh, we've got some some opportunities to go catch some fish around the Cocoa Beach area. Yeah, man, good good chat with you. I'll I'll keep you posted on how things uh, develop, but uh, yeah, definitely definitely picked up another notch. So hopefully this hopefully it holds out for you know maybe we'll get another month or two. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. All right, buddy. Thanks so All much man. this morning. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye-bye-bye. Hey, appreciate uh, our uh, producer, Paul, putting the uh, backdrop up with the Catch a Memory banner because I totally forgot that this morning. Cause yeah, we were, where were you doing? You were sleeping. We were talking about gun bling, you know, and, you know, it's... We'll have to talk about more gun bling yeah, here in a minute. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about that. So we're going to take our first break of the day. Captain Richard Bradley's in the studio this morning. If you guys and gals want to give us a call, please do. 321 321- Six three two one thousand. We're going to be right back after these messages. We appreciate those guys at Lamb Deck. Uh, you know they make a fantastic EVA non skid uh, product to put on your boat. If you want to jazz your boat up, make it look better, and especially make it slip resistant, whole lot safer, and a whole lot more comfortable. Give the guys at Lamb Deck a call three two one five zero five forty eight eighty eight. They're right there in Titusville. Uh, they scan your boat. Everything is like precision matched to the outline of whatever, you know, you want to do, whether it be your polling platform, your front casting deck, or the entire deck of your boat, or just just a helm pad. And they can put any kind of custom graphics they want that you want into it. You know what they, they need to do is they need to put it on the roofs nowadays because you got those sloped roofs. Oh, on the on the T-tops. Yeah. No, the, the sloped roofs that the, the, the uh, Secret Service agents didn't want them slipping oh, off, yeah, you off the roof. So that would be a good one to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Give those guys a call, 321-505-4888. We appreciate Lamdeck sponsoring this segment of the show. <clears throat> so, Richard, we were talking about 
the water temperatures and stuff. And, you know, so we found we found areas yesterday that the water temps were in 83, 84, 85. Bite was pretty good. You know, I, I tell you, I had to release a few redfish this week. Mm-hmm. And uh, every single one of them, even though they weren't harmed, had, were so stressed out in the hot water. Oxygen. Uh, oxygen Correct. depletion, yeah. I mean, and, it's just like you and I getting out there and, you know, running running somewhere. And then it's like, man, okay, go run again. No, I'm So reviving them, my clients were like, this fish is not going to make it. I'm like, no, it'll make it. You just need to take a lot more time with it and be a little more vigorous with it and and stuff like that. So I, I um, yeah, I, I, I struggle with, uh, you're a lot more scientific than I am, Jim. Uh, you know, uh, about a lot of the your water mm-hmm. temperatures, your moon phases, the solar. I just go out and I, I fish. And a lot of times, um, I, I it's going through my brain, what's going on here? When I'm hot and miserable and the water's hot and miserable, I, a lot of times I just think these fish, you know, they got to be hot and miserable. Yeah. And it kind of gets in my demeanor too. And sometimes I think it can play on me as a fisherman like, I don't really want to be here. Oh, the it, fish it, want to it, be here. It does the same thing for me. Yesterday, um, you know, when I got to the boat ramp, I was excited. Hadn't been on. I'd been at ICAST for two days, you know, which was fun. But hey, I'm back on the water. I get to go back to work today, and we get to go catch some fish. And you you start running around and looking for bait, and it's like it's oh, not there. There's no bait. It's not there, and you're and, like, okay, so what am I going to like, man, my there's plan. no bait. What are we going to put on a hook? Good thing I bought some croakers, you know, from the bait shop at $36 a dozen. Good thing I bought three dozen of those. Or or you have somebody on the boat you know can't make a cast, so you're thinking, oh, gosh, I'm, my artificials are not going to really work today. Right. Yesterday I had two uh, first-timers. Right. Didn't know which end of the rod to hold on to, so we had to work through that, you know, that, yeah, and, and 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 you love those people. Those yeah. are the people that you want on board a well, lot. Well, the one the one guy's you know, the one guy he, he was um, high school kids. Okay? Right, right, right. Twelfth grade, getting ready to go to college. High school kids. Guy's like, I've never been fishing before in my life. And I was like, perfect. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, you haven't picked up any bad habits. That's right. I can I can show you how to do it, and you won't have this preconceived notion of how to do it or how you've been doing it. Which normally is not. And not only that, they're out. They're outdoors. The best I mean, way. This is this is what every kid nowadays needs to do. That you and I and a lot of us mm-hmm. talk about those old fogies. You know, we're the old men now, sitting on the front porch. You know, but they they need to get outdoors, and it, it doesn't matter if they know how to do something. They're not. It's just, are you interested in being outdoors and doing something different? And 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 skill level is is something that's developed over time. Um, the same thing with just what, what you and I do. We get out there and we have feel. We, you've got to get outdoors to do something and um, and have fun. We're going to talk about my t- turkey hunting trip uh, th- this last spring because uh, I did something that I got outside of my comfort zone yeah, doing. Yeah, outside of your comfort zone. So, like you say, yesterday, you know, I've got two noobs, if you will. Mm-hmm. And, um, man, they did not realize the amount of pressure that uh, – 35 36 inch snook can put on you oh yeah and you know halfway through the fight the one the one guy was like i i I can't do this somebody take the rod and i'm like come on i said you got this man i said rub some man on yourself and let's make this happen come on you know and he you know he powered through i'm like you got this you can do it You're, you're doing fine you got this but testing challenging your limits um, physically being challenged, I, I see it more and more. And I know you see it more and more kids these days. And, and I'm not going to, you know, it, it's just the generation kids these days are not being manned up. If you will, there's, there being a lot of them are, have been come from broken homes. They've been raised by mom, right? Mom is. Fifty percent of the equation. Well, she's mom also is, working. Mom, mom is great. Okay, mom is the you know mom is the the soft, loving, you know, uh, nurturing parent. Dad is the hard ass. Yeah, dad's the one 
that 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 sticks gets, them that, out there gets, and gets some calluses on your hands. Dad's the one that puts a callus on your butt or two because you messed up. Dad's the one that's got you out there pushing the lawnmower in the middle of the day. Dad's the one that's pushing you to become a man. That's right. And I see so many young young men that aren't being pushed in that fashion because, unfortunately, they come from broken homes. And so at some point in time, somebody's got to take on that role. And yesterday, I, I mean, so yesterday, I'm seeing – two young men that are behind in their developmental stage as a man. And so by the end of the day, yeah. not only did they enjoy the fishing, not only did they catch some really big snook. I mean, we caught some good ones yesterday, but they got off the boat. I think with a better appreciation of what they need to become and how they need to challenge what themselves. they can do. And what they have the ability to do if they put their mind to it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and, and that's that's what the outdoors does to you. You can't get that sitting inside playing mm -hmm. video games. No. I mean, not not that video games aren't fun, and to sit down and play those with dad or your friends and stuff like that. But it, it, they're, they're mentally challenging. They're I mean, you see all these things online and stuff about reading. How you know when when you and I were growing up in the '60s and the '70s and uh, me more in the 60s than you were but um our our mom said hey look i don't want to see you in summer in indoors <laughs> and if you if you can't find something to do i'm going to give you something oh, yeah. to do oh, yeah. and you were like i'm out of here gotta go and i'm and then and we from, didn't even see and, and we from, didn't even come home till it was dark no and from the time you were five or six i mean four five six you jumped on the big wheel Oh, you know, and everybody, around everybody, the neighborhood every, every, as fast yeah, as you could go. Yeah, you would wear the front tire clean, a plastic tire clean off a big wheel in a year. So it, that next Christmas, you got a new big wheel. A new big wheel. You know, and then a bicycle, and then, you know, a skateboard. And, yeah. It's, I, uh, it was a different time altogether. It I, it, and we are, the expectations, I lived on a canal on Merritt Island. We had a little 12-foot John boat. And literally, I, I slipped that thing in the water every morning. And whether it was just to go... Um, snook fishing up and down the mangroves or or whatever fishing but mainly it was snook fishing mm -hmm. and then we would go out in the lagoon this beautiful grass flats and wade those grass flats and throw top waters uh or or whatever we could throw Johnson, and then as when we Silverman. The, the little johnson's <laughs> and you know the, the is that what's the one that had the um little red plastic uh, uh that was the not olympi yeah, Limpy, right? Yeah, I can't remember. But gator, the gator Limpy. Limpy. Spoon. But we would always yeah. say, "Boy, if that plastic can't, thing came off, we would never catch." You never catch another fish, fish on but it. But that yeah. was a bunch of baloney. <laughs> we were just making excuses because after we fished and we got tired, we were just swimming and uh, and 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 having fun and being boys. And so, and, how many days did you wander around, knee deep, waist deep in the in the lagoon system? Digging up clams. Oh, Dig, here's every the day. We'd pick all the, day we'd long. Pick the clams up and just throw them just to watch them make a splash. Correct. Just how you know it's, it's a way. Talk about a simpler time. You know how, yeah, big, well, is, you, how you, big a splash can I make with this clam? With this clam, you, <laughs> you go along. People don't even know it now, but those clams where you'd see the you'd see the siphon uh, yeah. coming out of the out of the uh, sand there, and you go, oh, that's a clam. So you dig down and you pull up a big old these big clams, big old chowder clam. Oh, giant clams everywhere and uh and and uh of course back then we we had a i had a seine net and you'd have to have a buddy to stain with and you'd stain up and you'd get shrimp by the jagillions in those in the yeah. seagrass and seahorses we sea had a lot horses. of seahorses back there and those grass little uh, shrimp yeah grass shrimp but those um, the nudibranchs the little the slugless snails that would put out the purple ink um, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and you forget about those things because right. we don't see that stuff as much anymore. They just don't have it around. What was interesting like is the Indian to. River Lagoon at one point in time was, if if I remember correctly, was the had the most biodiversity of any lagoon or any water system anywhere. Right. Anymore. If I rem I think there was like, I forgot what it was. It was like, I don't know, a hundred or something different, different kinds of shrimp. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot what the actual number was, but it was it was an astounding number of just just the shrimps. Things that we didn't know that we had that years that we had the real cold 10, uh, 2010 and 11 uh, that winter of 2010 11 we got the super cold. I got a video of it somewhere on my YouTube of me rescuing green turtles. Yeah, turtles. And we didn't. And Hawks Ridleys. And you and I didn't. And Terrapins. You, you can go along all day long, every day, and never see one of those stupid turtles. We, and then all of a sudden they're floating up. And, and they're everywhere. And, and we didn't know how we had that, that uh, uh, you know, like that. You know, it's interesting you mentioned turtles because I've seen a lot of turtles. The two trips that I did in the lagoon the last two weeks, I've seen a lot of those little white-headed terrapins. Terrapins. Now, we've a always seen of- those. But to see a big green turtle swimming around in the lagoon, we just never saw a lot of that. Well, guys and gals, we're going to take our next break. I um, want to say hey to those guys and gals that are out there on the Facebook feed. We appreciate you tuning in and watching on the Facebook feed. And if you get a chance, you can also watch uh, later on. If you want to go back and watch it, you can watch it on Captain Jim Ross on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. So lots of different ways to be able to watch the show, listen to the show. And we're going to be right back with Captain Richard Bradley and myself, Jim Ross, after these messages. So don't go away. Hey, gang, welcome back. We appreciate you tuning in every Saturday right here to Catch a Memory Outdoors from 7 to 9 a.m. Got our 7.30 break over with. Want to let you know, though, that this segment of the show is brought to you by Sun State Pest Management. If you guys and gals uh, have a, you know, got any kind of bug issues, you want to get rid of them, give Sun State Management a call. They get right out there, get you tightened up. You know, with all this rain, I see it at my house every day. I came out yesterday evening, and all of a sudden, there's an ant mound trying to form right at my back screen porch door. The roaches come out when the rain oh, comes up. Oh, they do, don't they? Spiders start, you know, uh, showing up everywhere, and it's like everything. So give Sun State a call. Take care of your pest problems. And that way you don't have to keep a bunch of pesticides around your house that your dogs and kids can potentially get into uh, and create, you know, some additional issues other than just your pest problems. So it's real easy to give them a call. 800-781-7378. That's 800-781-7378. And we appreciate those guys and gals at Sun State sponsoring this segment of the show. Richard Bradley and myself, Jim Ross, are in the studio. We got Captain Mike Mann calling in, giving us the Mosquito Lagoon report. What's going on this morning, Mike? Hey, good morning, guys. How are you today? Doing fantastic. Yeah, I am actually taking this weekend off. Uh, had a busy week. Good and for you. The lagoon is it has been good. I mean, tarpon fishing has been insane this week. Uh, get a bait in front of them, they eat and. Uh, but and I've also gotten several reports about a lot of tailing redfish. That is such a cool thing to have happen. You know, it's it's been quite a few years since we've seen the typical redfish activity. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's so good to see that recur- reoccurring. They're happy up there because they have seagrass and and stuff. I think I don't know. They have seagrass, and we've had really crazy low water for the last probably week. You know, we've had a lot of southwest winds, predominantly southwest wind, and, you know, we're coming up on a full moon, so we've had just really, really low water. And that's really got them tailing great. They've been up in the shallows. The schools are still around, but they're also starting to scatter a little bit where you got some singles. And, you know, you find an area, it's kind of like the old days, you find an area that's got good grass, and I, I think there's probably a pretty good crab hatch going on right now. It's a lot of what's got them tailing. You, have you seen a bunch of those little micro crabs? You know, I haven't been up to look. This is a report I got, but I, I'm going to say probably that that's what's going on, you know, full moon. And I have seen a lot of past crabs starting to float through, as well as some larger uh, blue crabs moving in the uh, in the ICWs that have looked, you know, the females have been full of eggs. So, Gotcha. Now, Mike, are you are you using crabs for your tarpon uh, or in nope. your redfish, or are you still sticking with your mullet? Uh, mullet on the uh, mullet on the tarpon, and I mean, yesterday we went two for two before I had the boat breakdown issue, which luckily uh, Dew Point up here was able to get me back on the water real quick. So, uh, it, no, the redfish we're using um, either sight casting with shrimp, or we are using chunk bait working along the shores. Uh, they've been really keying in on that really well. Gotcha. gotcha. So it's, and it, I actually got, well, I don't know, have you guys gotten upwelling going down there? I know you and I talked about that earlier this week. Yes. 
Um, yeah. Yesterday I saw water temps from starting at 85, 86, dropping all the way down to 73 as I ran north. No, I don't oh, see wow. it in the lagoon, no, but on, on yeah, the beach. on the beach. Yeah, yeah, on the beach. Well, I did get a report of manta rays on the beach mm-hmm. here oh, yesterday. Yeah. Yep. So, They're which, there. You know, that's kind of going back to, you know, I, I've talked to uh, Scott Tripp and I were talking yesterday, Captain Scott Tripp, at about the old days, this time of year, we'd go tarpon fishing in the morning once the sun got up, especially if you had a little bit of an upwelling you'd have rays and we'd go sight fishing for cobia almost we could do it almost all summer long june june was big yeah. for back yeah. growing up june june in the bite there was always rays in the bite um so yeah you're right and that kind of changed over time yeah i'm hoping you know this is going to kind of push a big pogey run going because we've had hardly any bait on the beach, so as it starts to warm back up, I'm hoping we're going to start getting some bait on the beach. It did push a lot of tarpon entry inshore. I mean, just tons of them. I, I Yesterday, we sat there, and I mean, first two baits in the water, we got a 40-pounder and then an 80-pounder. So there's a big mixture of sizes. Uh, this week, you know, 100-pounders, I've gotten 30-pounders, all in the same area. So you, you kind of... <laughs> It's got a big mixture of those big girls have pushed in. And Mike, are you are you getting them to eat any artificials at all? I have not. I talked. I heard Chris Myers got one to eat artificial uh, down in the river a couple days ago. I, I go with what works, and I know they'll eat artificial. You just got to have a little bit different angler on the boat. And I just unfortunately have not had anglers that could sit there and make the accurate cast and make the long cast, especially with the heavier tackle we're using. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the easy way to do it, or not easier way to do it, is is definitely you know put a put a live meal in front of them and uh, let that let that live meal uh, entice them into striking. That's correct, and and a lot of where I'm fishing too, there's a lot of current. And I think that's been some of the key is the amount of current moving in. And it's really hard to get um, that artificial working right because you're either throwing cross current typically or you're throwing up current, which then, you you know, it's hard to reel fast enough to get Mm -hmm. get them to act properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, You could probably troll a little bit. I would think you could probably do pretty well. I just have not tried it this so far lately. You know, they've been keying on the mullet so well. (laughs) It's been a good good year for mullet. Usually by now I figure out what their uh, main food is. Last year, you know, they won pig fish. I can hardly get them to eat mullet. This year it's all mullet. Interesting. Interesting. Well, as long as you get I'm them to bite something, that's all that matters. Yeah, the mullet has yeah, exactly. been, exactly. been an exceptional they've year been, for mullet. They've been really happy tarpon. And they've been, you know, we've been just – Having a lot of fun with them. I, I, I like getting those te- getting the clients on their first tarpon because then it makes an addict. I'm like <laughs> I'm like the drug pusher of tarpon up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got to put out put some people on one. That's all he wants this week is a tarpon. Uh, <laughs> it's well, fun. They're like, well, go ahead. I was going to say going back to those you know those tailing redfish um, up uh, you know north or south of George's Bar. Yes both okay well that makes it easy enough (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, they've been all over i mean they've been down um you know well or east of all over uh pretty much anywhere you can find you know there's so much grass now you just uh get up find the grass and start looking it's we've had really calm winds all week so that's been great and been helpful with it too looks like we've got a little bit of a change coming i think starting either today or tomorrow more of a south southeasterly wind we'll see how accurate that is but i just looked at the next four days and it looks like 10 to 15 southeast gotcha gotcha well that's fine so we'll see how that changes yeah, yeah that's fine we'll take that yeah I, I we won't rain up here see we're you we're not getting any rain i think we've had uh one day of rain at my house in the last two weeks really we get yeah. we get we get it's, the same thing but we get we get the the rains will come Right up to the to the barrier island, and it'll stop, yeah. and it'll yeah, disappear. Plenty of rain in Rockledge. Yeah, y'all are getting it on the mainland. I wouldn't say plenty. We're getting enough. Right. We're getting the right wow. amount. I, I would say. Um, I, we're not getting oh, you know, we're not getting drowned, and, but we're not we're not seeing it bypass us. 
I, I, I feel that we're kind of the same way. About once a week we get a, a little gully washer, but the rest of them we sit there and watch it come to us and stop for some reason. Yeah, that's the same thing we're getting here, Richard. Except it's not getting to us. It gets basically to 95, maybe a little bit east of 95, and then it stays there. If they come in earlier, we're getting them. But the one, you know, most of these have been coming in at three, four o'clock. So there's still a pretty decent sea breeze, keeping holding them back, and that kind of holds them right at that 95 line, maybe a little bit east of it. But the that, lagoon waters, the lagoon waters, ninety degrees. Yeah. Well, it's you know down down this way, uh, Mike. It seems like the midday time period, the clouds are forming right over the top of like the Merritt Island or mainland area, and then they start to get pushed back to the west a little bit. I think they just they and just, then that, they just and disappear. Then that, it's or, weird, or they just dissipate. Yeah, and then yeah. a little later on in the afternoon, then we get our our push coming back from from the west, like we we would normally normally expect. get. So, Mike, uh, looking at those looking at those redfish, going back to those redfish, are you sight casting them with little jigs, or are you just still staying with like a paddle tail? You going with a little uh, top water action? What's what's the ticket when you're seeing these tailing fish? Well, the grass has been so thick, I've kind of gotten away from the jig. I've I've been throwing live shrimp tail hooks. Okay. weightless, and kind of throwing it up past them, doing the old school like we used to. You'd reel it up almost and let it just sink down on their nose. Reel it, reel it right to the top yeah. of their head almost and then just stop reeling and <laughs> yeah. let it drop in on them. Yeah. That yep. is old school. That's something that we hadn't seen in years, yeah. and it's yeah. happening again. That's that's remarkable. Well, I'm not seeing it down in the Banana River yet. Uh, of course, you know, you see, the drum have been well, crazy. Well, it's interesting. But... Um, actually, um, one of the friends of the show, Shay Hobby, sent me a video the other day of the northern Indian River Lagoon area. Getting grass Had back. some grass in it. Had some nice grass in it. Now, I have not been north of the NASA Causeway in about two months. So, I, I, you know, it's maybe time for me to go venture back up that way a little bit. I need to go back there. I usually typically don't do that to the winter. I'm offshore, but I'm, I'm dealing with selling my boat. Gina says I can't buy another boat. Well, I sell this boat. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Imagine that. Well, why not? <laughs> no. I don't know. Everybody needs three Them and four boats, girls right? get in the way, I'll tell you. <laughs> hey, Richard. Did you, did you ask her if she did that with her clothes collection? <laughs> oh, man. Our shoes, right? Hey, Richard, there's, there's... With her, it's the bikinis. You know, there's forgiveness and there's permission. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I am hanging around with the wrong crowd here. Oh, that, you need to get you need to get on my wife's program. My wife just does it and then asks for forgiveness later. Oh, that's yeah. the, you need to get on her program. I don't know. I've done yeah. that. I, I guess <laughs> getting up in my sixties, I'm I'm starting to learn a lesson. <laughs> oh man, that's great. <laughs> well, Mike, we appreciate you calling in this morning. How does somebody get a hold of you, buddy? Yeah, my pleasure as always. You can give me a call at area code three eight six. Two nine five five nine nine one. You go right to my website, fatfishguide.com. And uh, guys, if you want to get on Catch the Most Tarp, and they'll be around for a few months. I got some days open towards the end of August. Gotcha. Well, appreciate it, Mike. Thanks a lot, and keep catching those big ones, buddy. Take care, guys. Get out and catch a memory. All right. Bye bye now. Hey, gang. We're going to take our next break. Captain Richard Bradley and myself, Jim Ross, will be right back with more Catch a Memory after these messages. So don't go away. Appreciate you tuning in every Saturday morning right here to Catch a Memory Outdoors. You know what, uh, Richard? I stopped in at ICAST. I stopped in and saw uh, the guys at Ingle, uh, and man, they're they're just always making new cool stuff. Tell me about it. So they've got this UL60 that they just came out with. They're getting ready to come out with a couple of more sizes. Um, but this is an it's an ultralight 60 quart. It's uh, injection molded instead of roto molded. Uh, I couldn't tell you the difference. And so it's yes, it's, I know what injection a, mold it's just is. It's a different process, right? But they have they have one upped. I mean the, the 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 typical high performance cooler, and they've cut the cost in half. Um, the sixty quart coolers. I mean it's it works just as good as any of my other standard bear proof whatever Ingle high performance coolers. It's a third the weight, you know, a third less weight, and 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 
and, and less cost less and cost half the price yeah you know i i switched to ingles years ago and uh the other thing is they seem to be a little bit more standard in size for some mm-hmm. reason than uh, the other brands that are making those thick walled you know things but they're 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 just the greatest things in the world. Now you and I have a little bit of, uh, a different than most people. We tend to get ice every day, mm-hmm. but if you if you want to keep your ice for four days, you you, you have to buy an Ingle cooler. Yeah. And and when we go on, um, I have a Sprinter van now, and we are going around the country or around the state, and we want to camp overnight or two or three nights. Hey. You get the, ice for the entire the time. entire time. I don't even. I, I, and if I did that with my old, you know, old style coolers, uh, yeah, no, that wouldn't happen. It, it's every day you have to buy ice. That and they had a special at ICAST, so I picked up one of the new lithium ion battery powered bubblers for my little nineteen quart bait tank slash cooler so you made a, slash dry box. Flash, you know, whatever. Um, Keep even, your shrimp in there. Well, yeah. Even though my other one that ran on the D batteries has, it still works just fine. Right. From day one, it's got a little rust on it here and there. The screws got a little rust on it, but the the pump works great, and it'll run days. On, oh yeah. On a couple of batteries. Um, but man, you you know, you put a, in you put a container of ice in there, and you do that, and I I take and I put a frozen water bottle. Right. Put the frozen water bottle in there. I keep one or two more because it's hot this time of year. I keep one or two more with me in my Ingle cooler. Ingle cooler. And uh, on ice. And I we put the shrimp in there, and I put a little bit of bait saver in there. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, th- that preps the water and keeps the ammonia down, that kind of thing. Because uh, with shrimp, they, there's a they lot poop. of ammonia with shrimp. And so they can ruin water real quick. So that, that, can, that water conditioner really helps. Helps out. And, I mean, I'll, I'll keep shrimp two or three days in that thing. So it's really cool. And, and when you pull when you pull them out of that water, that frozen They're water frisky. bottle has, has dropped that temperature down to, let's just say, 65 degrees. You know, right. You pull them out of there. They are, they're jumping out of your hand. Yeah, you can't catch them. You can't hardly catch them to get a hook in them. When you cast them in the water, you see that fish and you cast it in the water, that shrimp is, I mean, it is a fish magnet when you, when you pitch – a, a shrimp that's been in that kind of cooler water into, you know, the, the, the into the, the, the strike zone, it's, it's game it's, on. It's game on. You know, we were just talking before you got here. That I have a pet lizard now in our backyard. Mm-hmm. You know, these curly, these giant curly tails. And uh, we've taught them how to eat out of our hands. And if I bring live crickets to the scene, uh, you know, you throw a cricket <laughs> down there and the faster he jumps – the faster that that lizard wants to get on those crickets, yeah. and uh, you throw a, a mealy worm down there, and they're like, "What's that?" And then it might take them a while to kind of figure it out. Well, he doesn't have to chase it. He doesn't have to. Ch- they love to chase it. That's just like fish. Yeah. People don't realize that, but fish want a frisky bait. They want. And taste you it. get a bait out there, and you throw it out there, and it just is kind of like uh, sleepy. You're like, oh my gosh, let's put on another bait. This yeah. bait's lame. Then you take it off. You take that lame bait off your hook, and you throw it in the water, and then all of a sudden that lame bait turns frisky. <laughs> it gets eaten. It's eaten. <laughs> so anyway, EngleCoolers.com. Check out all the cool stuff that they've got uh, at Engle. They're just they're constantly coming out with new product and good product. I, it's you know just new colors, new new whatevers. It's just it, just a great company. Great people at, at that company. Just a great company. So lifetime warranty on their product too. So you gotta like that. Check them out. Um, hey, you know what? Let's get the catch conditions out of the way real quick. Um, we got south winds at uh, five to ten this morning, going southeast at ten to fifteen by this afternoon. Seas inside of twenty miles this morning are basically two to three feet, with a dominant period of around eight seconds. The Ponce Inlet buoy thirteen miles off the coast. Water temp there showing is eighty one degrees, two feet at nine seconds. Uh, the four-mile buoy outside of Cape Canaveral is uh, 81 degrees and two feet at 10 seconds. That water temperature's dropped down, as you can see, because it was 85 yesterday in that same area. Weird. Um, 
20 mile buoy right now is reading 83 degrees, two feet at 10 seconds, and the six mile buoy out of Fort Pierce is 82, and it was reading two at three seconds. So they must have a little wind chop going on down there. It's kind of overriding that buoy versus the swell. What's interesting about that particular buoy is that I use, I, you know, even though it's in Fort Pierce, and guys are like, well, you know, what, what difference does that make? It's a long way down the way. Well, most of the buoys key in on the ground swell. What is the ground swell period? And that's what they give you. So they give you, as an example, the four-mile buoy out of Canaveral, two feet every 10 seconds. Right. Okay? So there's a two-foot swell every 10 seconds. So how does two, three, two foot at three seconds? That's just a chop. That's just a wind chop on top We call of that, that's almost square. So, so I use the two of those together to figure it out. Try and figure out what is the true condition of the sea state. And, uh, and so that's, you know, you know, that's, that's the reason that I throw that into the fishing forecast for you guys and gals to listen to so that you know. So the western edge of the Gulf Stream right now is about 40 miles due east of Ponce, 26 due east of Canaveral, right around 22 due east of Sebastian. Current surf temps, Ponce is 80, Cocoa Beach 82, and Sebastian is 80. And the tides, we've got, uh, I'm just going to give you two tides. Uh, it's, it's pretty close to high uh, just a couple minutes ago. So the next low is at 1.15 p.m. The next high is at basically 7.59. 8, 8 o'clock tonight is, is the next high. Um, Sebastian Inlet, uh, the next low is at uh, 1.46 p.m. And the next high is at 8.17 p.m. And then the sole lunar tables, which are typically the best times to hunt and fish, presented to you by All About Archery down in Melbourne. The major today, midday, 11.51 to 1.51 p.m. And that's why I was saying this this past week, you know, it, it slowly rolls back each day. And this past week, it was, you know, started at, at 9 and then 10 and then 11. Now it's, now it's up to 11. That mid-morning to midday period is the best bite right now, uh, yeah. which is kind of surprising because you would expect it to be at daybreak or dawn, especially with the heat, that sort of thing. Well, you got to remember that. That midday is, is they're firing. It, 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 it can fire. Snook in And I found that, that – uh, you know, you watch the moon phases and, and, and the tides and stuff like that. And sometimes you're like, how come this ain't working? Everything, the magic button's supposed mm. to be here and it just doesn't. And then other days you're like, well, it shouldn't be at all. And it's, it's doing fine. So you gotta, they're great indicators. And, and I would say they're 80, 80%. But you got to also well, look fish. at all the rest of the information on this on this report. Yeah. So what's your wind direction? Wind direction. What's your wind speed? What's your water temp? Temperature. What's your wave height and wave period? And then you throw in the solunar on top of it. Correct. All that stuff matters, and uh, and then it can be thrown out the window. Think about it's it wildlife. like think about it like this: you got a bowl of vanilla ice cream. That's pretty good ice cream. You put chocolate let's syrup Let's put some on. chocolate syrup on it. Oh, well, look here now. Yeah, let's put getting some, better. Let's put some sprinkles in there. Oh, now look you what we got going on. You always put things to food, Jim. Yeah, you, well, you always know, do. I, all you got to do is look at me, and you know, <laughs> you know. That's, it explains everything right there, right? Well, then you put the whipped cream in the cherry. Well, now you got something, you know? So that's well, the way I look at it. What do you You call go from it? a plain bowl of vanilla ice cream to a full-blown banana split if you will you know what do you call what do you call what do you call a snowman with a six pack <laughs> that's a good question i do not know an abdominal snowman <laughs> that's a dad joke that's, that's a, a that terrible a dad, dad joke. joke well guys and gals we're at the top of the hour we're going to take our top of the hour break we're going to come back with captain richard bradley and myself and a whole lot more catch remember we got a whole nother hour for you guys and gals we're going to talk a little turkey hunt and we're going to talk a little bit about getting your bow set up and i got some new bling i got some I got some new bling for my gun, so uh, I'm gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about gun. Mike, hour of catch a memory happening right now. Got Captain Richard Bradley in the studio with me, and of course I'm Captain Jim Ross. For those of you that are just tuning in, we appreciate you. Uh, for, you can get us on uh, four or five different uh, ways to be able to listen to the show. Uh, if you're just now tuning in on the radio, you can also get us on the Facebook feed. You can get us on CatchYourMemoryOutdoors.com. That's a streaming live audio feed. And if you miss the show, you can always go back and listen to the podcast later after uh, they render. They render right after the show, and they're basically posted 
within about 15 minutes. So right around by 8.15, or sorry, 9.15, we've got a complete show ready for you to listen to. And then, of course, uh, we have the video component to that without the commercials, uh, or without the uh, the uh, the breaks, uh, right there on the YouTube channel at CaptainJimRoss.com. So we appreciate you guys and gals uh, listening in in the various ways that you do listen in. Captain Richard Bradley is my guest in the studio this morning, and we're going to go right to the phone lines. It is time to talk to Miss Lisa Fitzgerald from CCA. Good morning, Lisa. Well, good morning, Captain Jim. How are you? Doing fantastic. It was good seeing you this week. Pardon me? It was good seeing you this week. Yes, it sure was, and what an eye cast it was. It was um, a fantastic great, show. Great to see everyone in the industry. Beautiful uh, booths everywhere, great new products, and great information on what's happening within our industry. So, uh, so excited to see the future of the industry thriving. So, Looking forward to this 2025 coming up, but we talk about 2025, but let's let let's look at 2024 right now. Um, I had shared with you, <clears throat> we have a total of 14, 14 tag redfish recaptured in the local waters of Florida. And unfortunately, many of those uh, captures were legitimate. Um, you know, people didn't know about it didn't um, pay attention to the rules. There are so many things that happen, but I just want to remind your anglers that there are still plenty of fish out there to catch, plenty of time to catch those fish. We still have more than 30 days of fishing from Memorial Day to Labor Day, and you can still get registered. It only takes one fish, Jim, one fish. It doesn't have to be a tagged redfish or a tigerous tagged dolphin. It can be any Inshore, offshore species, any saltwater fish that you catch can be entered in the star competition presented by Yamaha. Well, I think I, I don't know if I shared this with you, but I shared this with Brian Gorski. I am very happy this year with the increased number of anglers that are getting on my boat to go on a charter to catch a variety of species of fish that are bringing along their CCA star, ta- you know, uh, uh, measuring device because yeah. they are signed up and in play there's a lot of people that are that are finally realizing that hey this is not a joke they're giving stuff away every they're giving money I mean, away they give, i mean it's and 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 it you know with this new category with just having the inshore species and the offshore species category it's simplified everything and uh you know i tell you it's uh I'm I'm really happy that the message is getting out there. However, like you said, 14 tagged redfish have been caught so far this year by unregistered anglers. Wow. Well, not all of them. Some of those anglers um, were claimed to be registered but didn't exactly follow the rules completely. You have to be registered for the competition before you catch before the fish. Before you catch the fish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that helps. I mean, yeah, that helps. Uh, that, yeah, you know, um, I'm not, and, you Lisa, know, it, Lisa, just, look at it like this. You can't win the lottery until you buy the ticket. That's right. <laughs> that's that's right. exactly right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I will tell you, it has been amazing to see the youth. One of the coolest things that happened at the... Uh, I cast was I had FWC come over and tell me one of their um, oh uh, guys one of their young men that they've recently hired and he is in their uh, department that handles all of the regulations and rules and he's in Tallahassee a lot governmental affairs he is a recipient of a CCA Florida Star competition scholarship and that's what helped him get through school and really encouraged him to get involved in conservation so i was so excited to hear that and then i had about five or six other youth that came up to me and i recognized them young women and young men who have received scholarships from us and it was just it was an amazing opportunity to really see how like you said people coming on your boat with measuring devices youth coming up to me and saying, hey, I want a scholarship, and I'm getting ready to go to school now, and just 
so many great things that are coming out of this. In fact, I am going to be speaking Tuesday night on your coast at the Florida Sport Fishing Association meeting there um, Tuesday night at the, I don't have it in front of me, but it is um, the Memorial, War Memorial? Yeah, the Veterans Mem- Yeah, the Veterans Memorial Center, which is right behind the Merritt Square Mall on Merritt Island. That's right, in Merritt Island. I will be speaking there Tuesday night. Come out. I have lots of little goodies that I'm going to give away. You can get registered. I'll have the star measuring devices there. More importantly, you can see one of the boats that is being given away, the Debt Cat sitting on an Infinity trailer. I mean, I am telling you, it is holy cow. This boat was last year's boat. They've gotten a bill for us. And the boat that someone would choose would not be as, I call it, fancy. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it is a gorgeous boat. Um, I, I, I'm going to give a shout out to Infinity Trailers. I didn't know much about them. Right. I, I went to hook that boat up so that I could take it. Um, now, this is a 27 foot wide, 8 foot wide boat with a, a big. Uh, T-top on it, center console, beautiful big boat, and the trailer was impeccable. The, the All of the bells and whistles, just everything about this trailer was phenomenal. And then I got on the road with it. Now, I had to travel I-4 home. You know about I-4 from um, oh, yeah. Orlando to Tampa. Hmm. Start, stop, all the different things. I am telling you, that, that boat trailered. I didn't even know it was back there. Yeah. It was just, it was insane. A A 27-foot boat. The only way I knew it was back there is in traffic. I had all these guys, roll your window down. What kind of boat is that? Where is that from? (laughs) Because it is just a, you know, I've never, I've I've had it on occasion. But, man, it was rubbernecking for the boat. And just, it, it was really a fun time to see everybody so interested in what was going on with that boat yeah i've, ha- I've had a chance to get out on on uh, uh blair wiggins deck cat uh we've we've done some fishing and some lobstering shot a couple of shows uh out of it that sort of thing and if you need deck space that thing has it i mean in just abundance of deck space and it's uh and, and, it, and it gets space. and it gets so skinny i can't believe for a boat that's that big how shallow it will go. Well, not only shallow, but it takes big water. I, yeah. I was in it out of steam happy, and we were in two two to three foot chop. And I'm thinking, oh, I am going to have a backache. And let me tell you, that thing was just slick, whoosh, like butter across the yeah. top of it. Yeah. Hey, Lisa, yeah, so, before we get ahead. to our next break, let's, you know, there are a lot of people out there that may be thinking to themselves, you know, I'd like to get into the CCA Star Tournament, but I'm still kind of hesitant. I don't want to, you know, I just don't, I'm just not sure I want to pull the trigger and, and, and do this. Right. Let's let's go. So after you have signed up for the event, you right. go out. Okay, you're on your boat, you're on, your, on the bank, whatever it is. You catch a 12-inch speckled trout. Right. What's the so process I'll, from the time that you get the fish to the landing net, to the, the, the boga grip, the whatever? What's the process? How do, how do they go about making sure that they properly register this fish in the inshore saltwater division? All right. So once you register, the next step is going to your app store and downloading the CTA Star Tournament app. Okay. You want to make sure you have the tournament app on your phone. It's simple and free. You get the app on your phone. Make sure that you have the official measuring device. You can pick that up at Strike Zone. You can pick that up at West Marine Academy. So many different bait and tackle shops. You can pick it up at the um, Skeeta Lagoon Outfitters. There are so many different tackle shops around your area where you mm-hmm. can pick up the measuring devices. Have a measuring device on your boat. When you catch that fish, put the fish on the measuring device, or if it's a smaller fish or a a fish that's too large um, and you don't want to handle it, like a tarpon, like a big snook, different, a shark, Shark, a cobia, any of those things, just put the measuring device in the picture. 
That is my identifier to know that that is a 2024 catch. I need to know that it's a 2024 catch. Right. Um, also, you if you're going to enter it in the inshore division, you want to make sure it's of minimum legal size. Okay, so, so fish. A, so a fish that is not uh, uh, at least 15 inches, then it doesn't qualify as a legal catch if you wanted to keep it in the inshore division or if you want to keep it but you can enter it in the conservation division and in the conservation division that is a power pole conservation division you can win power poles you can win kahuna wagons win micros okay um, micro anchors so there's so many great prizes you can win there so every every single fish counts Every single fish counts. You catch a catfish. You catch a ladyfish. You catch a, um, you know, a dogfish, uh, a needlefish, um, any of those species. And oftentimes you go out and you go, oh, all I caught was a catfish or oh, all I caught were, you know, uh, a toadfish. Those count. Those count. You can yeah. win prizes with those. <laughs> so um, take a picture of it and then either do it right there on the boat while you're there you can take the picture through the app or you can take it through your phone. When you go to the app, you can it'll say take picture or go to library. And you just go to your phone, okay. you find the picture of that fish, you upload it into the app, and you're done. And you're done. And you're done. It's as simple it'll as that. Some questions. All you gotta it's do is have the measuring yeah. device. Well, be signed up, download the app, have the measuring device. Put the measuring device in the picture. Submit the picture. Yes. Five now, easy steps. When the submission of the picture. It's going to ask you a few questions. And this is where, as an organization, feel that it comes a critical component to conservation. It's going to ask you, did you release that fish or did you keep it? Mm-hmm. It's going to ask you where it was hooked. In the mouth, did you gut hook it? What? How did that happen? And then it will ask you, a, a general area. We are not asking for the GPS coordinates, just a general area, so that we have information we can share. Aren't we kind of like really critical of the data that's being used to determine different things within our fishing industry? Yeah. Here's a way of specifically giving great information, especially in your offshore species. Was a descending de- how that fish did it swim away? You know, did you use your descending device? This gives specific information that FWC and other environmental groups can use to make imp- uh, decisions. It's called dependent data. And we had 33,000 from last year that we were able to share with different organizations. If they ask us for it, we're not, you know, you've got to ask us for right. the information. So as an example, you catch a 12-inch trout in the yep. co- in the Cocoa Beach area uh, of yep. the Banana River. So you put in there, you put the trout in the conservation uh, <laughs> section of the app, and you say, hey, I caught it in the Banana River near Cocoa Beach. And that's that's really all you need to do. What about, okay, so we're out fishing offshore. And we catch a fish, and we're in, uh, we're on, Pe- we're we're using uh, some bottom bait, and we're fishing on Pelican Flats, and we release a red snapper. Yes. Doesn't need to have GPS coordinates. Just say, hey, I was fishing on North Pelican Flats, South Pelican Flats, uh, North A Day, Middle A Day, South A Day. Just a general area of the of the Correct. reef or structure you were fishing on, uh, or does it ask for a water depth? It does not ask you for a water depth. No. Okay. It just asks for an area. Gotcha. So you don't have to give away your super secret, you know, snapper spot or your super secret and grouper that, spot. And when the information is shared, we do not share any. If, if someone were to give us GPS coordinates, which some people do, uh-huh. um, we don't share that information. Gotcha. gotcha. That information is not shared with anyone. So you've got you've got another... How many, how many more days? 30, 30 more days or so? 30 plus days. 30 plus days. It's a total of $40 to enter the competition, $40 to be a CCA member. So if you take $80 and you divide it by 30, 
that's how much a day it costs you to participate in this competition. I don't know of another tournament that has such an inexpensive entry fee that has the price structure we have. Oh, talk and about it. Talk first, about a high return on a small investment. Let's let's talk about the inshore first place prize. It is a Carolina skiff, 18 foot with a 75 horsepower motor sitting on a trailer. First place prize in the offshore division is a brand new 250 Yamaha. Second place in the offshore division, two, a 150 Yamaha. Second place in the um, inshore division is a brand new Ginu. So there are some really great prizes. Yeah. You look at, um, you know, the Tigris Tag Dolphin division. Tigris Tag Dolphin is ten thousand dollars cash. Nice. You catch the first tag dolphin, and we haven't had one of those by someone who's registered. Uh, I mean, everybody's catching dolphin right now. You can enter a dolphin in the offshore division, and then if it's tagged, holy cow, you get an additional ten thousand dollars. You get a ten k kicker on top. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Well, Lisa, There's we are just so we, many ways to win. We are pushed up against our break. How does somebody get involved with this great tournament? So the way you would get involved is go to our website, which is ccaflstar.com. Get yourself qualified as a member. You, you buy your membership, register for the tournament, and you are in like Flynn. If that's too complicated for you or you're heading out this morning, you're heading out to go fishing, you don't have access to the, um, to the website, go to 844-387. 7827, and we will register you right over the phone. Nice. Well, thank you so much for the call this morning. We look forward to having you call us back next week with hopefully somebody listening to this program in my east central part of the state that said, I was a CCA member, I was registered for the Star Tournament, and I found a tagged redfish. So check this out. I get to bring home one of these big prizes. Don't forget, October the 12th is the award ceremony in Crystal River at Sweet Citrus Acres RV Resort. If you have a camper or a motor coach, you can stay right on property, walk over, enjoy a great, great event, great food, great libations, lots of fishing celebrities. It's October the 12th. It's open to the public. And we are going to be awarding you scholarships and so many other great things. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Lisa. We appreciate you calling in and letting uh, the listeners know about this this morning. Thank you, and you have a great day, Jim. You too. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Hey, gang, we're going to take our next break. Captain Richard Bradley and myself are going to be right back with more Catch Your Memories, so don't go away. This segment show is brought to you by Petrucci Insurance, and you know, you've know you heard me say it before, and I'll say it again. Nobody likes paying for insurance, so make sure that you're not getting ripped off by the insurance company. Call Petrucci Insurance or an independent uh, agent, they'll find you the best deal, the best coverage at the best price. Super easy to get a hold of them. 321 632 1200. That's 321 632 1200. Make sure you're not paying too much for your insurance today. We're going to the phone lines. Donald Waberman is calling in from the West Coast. Good morning, buddy. Hey, good morning, Captain Jim, Captain Rick. Hope all is well with you guys. Everything hey, is I'm fantastic, good. buddy. How are you doing this morning? All right. You know me, a big proponent and member of CCA for many, many years. Yep. Uh, registered for star every single year i've registered my uh grandson every year when they they come in um i wish he would live here but my son-in-law is in the air force so they have no choice where they live and they're now in san antonio but they were just here for a couple weeks and i took my grandson he just turned 15 on july 12th took him out fishing on a charter he's landed 17 different species except for a redfish and I told the captain, the guide, I said, look, it's all about Henry. I want him to catch a redfish. He goes, okay, so we're going to catch trout first, and then we're going to go to a spot. He landed eight sea, uh, uh, sea trout, and he landed seven redfish, and every redfish was over slot. Nice. I'm, I'm sorry, not over slot, in slot. Oh, uh, in slot. That's still nice. The smallest, the smallest redfish was 21 inches. His biggest one was 25 um, he also got a 22 and a half inch snook, so we got a slam that day. We both doubled up on redfish twice. I got a slam. I got a 28 and a half inch snook, and every fish was put into CCA store. And I, let me tell you, I checked every redfish 
with uh, like a microscope to make sure checking for a tag. Um, unfortunately, no tags, but you know we got all these fish in the inshore division, redfish yep. division, and conservation, you know, conservation division. division. Yeah, yep. that's cool. That is yeah, cool. Mine, you know, got into the snook division because it was in slots. So, which which was cool. Henry's uh, had to be put in the conservation. His snook, but it it was awesome. Just just a great day out there, and he's just such an incredible angler for his age. Eighteen different species that redfish was. He'll remember that, that for the rest of his since life. He's three years old. That is really cool. That is really cool. Yep. Well, and and no, not not that grandparents aren't you know fun to be around anyway. Because I remember both my both my grandmother on my mom's side. Uh, my grandfather on my mom's side and my grandfather on my dad's side all like to fish. And so I got to go fishing with them, them all. And it, it just, it's one more thing that you can, you can kind of bond the younger generation with the older generation and have them have the younger generation looking forward to coming and seeing you. Right. Because they know you're going to be doing some fun stuff. So that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, congratulations Absolutely. on catching all those fish too. Yeah, that was awesome. And, you know, like like one of the captains over here used to say, do yourself a favor, take a kid fishing. You know, it's like, yep. it's the best thing. You know, I've taken my mm. nieces fishing, my nephews fishing, and it's just, oh, we rented a pontoon boat. Now, my daughter has uh, two little ones as well. They're three and four. Uh, each of them caught uh, pinfish each on, on, the, um, on the pontoon boat that we rented. So, got pictures of them with with their little fish they're too young you know of course for cca star being that that little but when they got when finally when my son-in-law retires from the air force another five years you know, put it in 22 years in the air force they're moving back to florida once those kids come of age they'll be registered in cca and the star absolutely for a chance for a scholarship you know it's just a no-brainer I, I don't understand. I preach it all the time. And everybody, please vote yes on Amendment 2 coming up on the ballot, you know, when it comes up, when we have time, when we got to vote, because, you know, it's, 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 it, it's crazy, you know, what's going on. You know, so many places are now preventing us from fishing and whatever. Yeah. So this has got to pass, and it's got to pass by 60%. We're, we're going to we're gonna be talking about that a, a little bit more in the yeah. up coming next couple of upcoming weeks because yeah it's, i know it's early at first i was kind of like yeah why do you got to vote to go fish or to go hunt i mean we do that already but there are some serious uh, you know clubs organizations out there that are trying to shut fishing and hunting down in yep. e in each state and i didn't realize that until now and it was like wow these people coming they're coming for you oh yeah they are. yeah they're coming I for mean, something that you enjoy doing. And if you yep. and if you don't vote yes on two, then they're going to have the ability to potentially do that. I'm, I don't know if it would happen in the state or not, but I don't want to take the chance. So no, I appreciate absolutely. you bringing that up, Donald. Yeah, they shut down the sky you know, the Skyway Fishing Pier in uh, the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. You know, it's a, it's a state it's a state fishing pier. Um, you're not allowed to have multiple hooks now, like Sabiki rigs. To fish on the piers because the the people for the pelicans, um, you know, fought and they won. And you're not allowed to use more than two rods or or rods with multiple hooks like sabiki rigs now on the skyway. And that's one of the so, best ways to catch pilchards and greenies to use for bait off of that piece of you know, fishing structure. Yep, absolutely. So yeah. they're coming for us. They these, are these people are a bunch of wackos, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> You imagine well, that. Well, I'm sure that there's one or two of us out there that may just agree with agree you. with you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, we've got our next so, break. We've got to take, uh, but we appreciate yep. you calling in this morning, Donald. And, and that is Absolutely. so awesome that you got to spend some time with your grandson and that both of you got slams on that charter. That is that is really yeah. cool. Yep. And we were on the news on the, here locally, uh, Fox 13, uh, Good Catch, uh, Tampa Bay. So we were on the news on Friday. Awesome. So we got pictures. So that was cool that Captain Dylan Hubbard did that. That is that is cool. Well, we appreciate yep. it. You take care and have a great day. You okay? take care. Hey, tight lines. Stay safe out there. Appreciate you guys. Take care, mm -hmm. Kevin. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hey, gang, we're going to take our next break. We come back. Got a whole lot more. So don't go away. We get, 
got a bunch of stuff we got to get crammed in before the end of the show, Richard. So we got to make this happen. Let's uh, let's get to this break and get back to it. We're going to be right back. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Starbright Cleaning Solutions uh, products. Actually, we're going to talk about the wax and seal, the new ceramic wax and seal. This is a brand new product that Starbright just introduced this past year, and I've been putting it on my truck. And oh, I put it on my truck one time about five months ago, and the water still beads. So it's pretty cool stuff. Um, I do need to go ahead and wash the truck and put a second coat on it because they say after you put the second coat, and then once you subsequently get another month or two down the road and put the third coat on, then it's like good for like ever. It's it's pretty neat stuff the way that this uh, just it keeps you know bird droppings bugs all of those things that you don't like Michael on your White. paint keeps that all off of it. I think you need and, to come uh, over and show me how to do it on my. I'll, I'll bring my truck over and you will use your hose to wash it with and then we can do my truck. Maybe that we'll just have beer and watch Gina and Robin do it. <laughs> That would work. <laughs> that would work. I'm in. So anyway, check out the new ceramic line of products, uh, especially this wax and seal product. Uh, works great for your boat and works great for your truck. Just a fantastic uh, uh, new product that they've come out with. Just like all the Starbright products, they they just simply work better. Hey, we're going to go to the phone lines. We've got Captain Jeff Cranick on the line calling in from Tavernier in Northern Isla Mirada. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. Uh, I just set up the uh, remote uh, remote studio for you this morning again. Oh, yeah? Having our coffees on the back porch. The back porch, yeah. Yeah. yeah how, food, food, food got down yesterday, so. How has the uh, the bite been here the last couple of days? You guys catching some fish? Um, yeah, you know, we actually have been catching some fish. Even uh, um, the water's back up to 90 degrees on some of the flats, but mm-hmm. we've been getting some passing storms <clears throat> that have dropped it down a little bit to make it fishable. We actually caught the small, smallest bonefish I've ever caught on. Uh, Rod Reel. He picked up a piece of shrimp in the channel. He shouldn't have <laughs> been there. But cute little thing. We had a good night the other night. Uh, caught that bonefish. <clears throat> Landed a 40-inch tarpon that took a... Uh, Again, took a shrimp off the bottom, and then we uh, landed a nice little lemon shark. My buddy from Ohio, from high school. So yeah, it's it's been a pretty good bite. Cool. Have you, Jeff? Have you run over into the park uh, here in the last week or two? Yeah, uh, a couple of miles, a couple of two, three miles. I haven't been across, but not over towards Flamingo, because uh, you know when we were there back in May, that water up around Dump Key and and Garfield Bite and even Porpoise Point had you know it was it was hot it was 92 93 degrees up in there and i was i was actually talking with um ridge murphy uh rick's son and he was showing me he because he, he guides down there every day he was showing me why that water is the way it is and it's because of a lack of freshwater flow because of all of the diversions and things that have occurred and he goes look at the, if you look at the 441 going across from tampa or from uh fort myers to, to miami you look from basically a Mockley north, you can see that there's just tons and tons of water. But then it's held up and it's diverted, you know, either through, direction through little, from there. Yeah. And so from there south, there's there's it's, it's dry land. I mean, on the Google Earth pictures, it's, it's just bone dry where it should be a sheet flow of water coming through. And well, he says if they will just put some, you know, put some openings in here to allow this water to continue flowing it'll restore all of this you know these it'll fix all of these problems that we've had in this one little particular area over towards key largo still got you know good water you get flow from back and forth from the the bridges and stuff over towards the west side from flamingo west you still got good flow but in that center section uh that center you know portion of the the park area it's uh, it's still it's still when I was when I was taking marine biology what forty five years ago in co- in college and 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 all, they t- this was a a big topic, uh, because they had put you know alligator alley across yeah. there and all. It's so a dam. you go to Louisiana and you go I ten and they've raised it for it seems like a hundred miles. Yeah. Why couldn't they have raised huge sections of 
Uh, well, it's easier to dig dig a ditch and it, it's cheaper, burn. but we're not yeah. looking at cheap. We're looking at hey, saving our environment. The other thing is, is they put, you know, with that that hurricane uh, back in the 30s, I guess it was that devastated Okeechobee, and they put the big berm around Okeechobee. Yeah. And that that also affected things, and of course, farmlands have been drained and everything for the sugar and and all that other stuff. But it's 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 just. Uh, a travesty what's happened and now that we've just accepted it and it's not going to change it's it's kind of like we were talking about that amendment two thing that we're talking about once they change something they're not going to change it back uh and and we it, what 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 short of nuclear war is going to yeah. keep us from from getting our I don't, I don't, that fixing, was fixing, fixing the things. Well, Jeff, how's how is the uh, you know the, the the passes and and the cuts like you know like Snake Creek and Whale Harbor and, mm. and Tavernier those deeper cuts are you yeah. seeing are you seeing fish in them right now? A, a few. The mangroves are still offshore in the on the twenty foot reef. Really, they I haven't come back in yet, huh? They have not come back in yet. Huh. Um, a lot of grunts around. Um, but not mang- no mangroves. We got into a few baby uh, yellowtails under the bridge the other day. Have you seen any so, permit? I mean, when we were down there in May, the permit was just off the charts. I have not, but they have been catching them. Uh, the next door neighbor over here, Eddie, they've been on them back in the, some of the passes. Okay. And close to the house, too. They told me exactly where they were if we want to go over there and play with them. Gotcha, gotcha. So, now the grass, the grass does look great compared to the last couple of years, at least in the park. Uh-huh. Um, so, but <laughs> you were talking about water flow, you know, alligator alley, all, all that is, is a dam. Yeah. I, mean, yep. I know they yeah. tried to put some band-aids on it by uh, pushing culverts underneath the road, but it just doesn't yeah, do there's, it. There's a lot more work to be done before. You know, they could say they're helping. Gotcha. You can be uh, down there for uh, what? We got sportsman season coming up. You're yeah, gonna be down. You're gonna mini, be down there mini, for that. The mini, yeah, the mini mini season day was kind of a disaster in this area. Um, it started to lightning. We had a lightning storm from like eleven thirty at night till three in the morning. So we decided not to go out. Everybody was already climbing in back to bed and. The water was ripply from the rain all night and, and cloudy. And then we dealt with storms the following night again. So gotcha. the guys I talked to that got out did okay. Nothing to real rave about. I, I t- talked to a couple of the guys that went outside of Sebastian, and they said just about every lobster they put their hand on was still egg bearing. Yeah, there's a lot of egg bearing females right now. That's I talked to uh, uh, some guys that d- dove out of ponds, and they said this the same thing that you know they physically saw you know seventy, eighty lobsters, but you know they only kept a handful because most of them were uh, most of them were full of eggs, which is actually a, a good thing. I mean, is oh yeah, you know, it's good to see that they're reproducing. I mean, you do, you can't take them right now, but you can take them later in the season when they drop their eggs. And it, it's typical for that up there. I, I I don't know if I've ever even seen an egg bearing female down here during many seasons. But um, you know, you and I were talking earlier in the week about the upwelling. It's here a little earlier than it normally is, and uh, you know, set. That that's going to make them hold on to their eggs a little longer up there. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, you know, we, do, we don't normally see that until, uh, you know, weather's changing, but normally that uh, thermocline doesn't come in there until after many seasons, so it is early. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully we'll uh, be able to get some cobia. If, yeah, you know, we know where to do if, that. If, if it's, if it's going to be cold, let it be cold and let the cobia show up is the way I look at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. Well, buddy, thanks for the call this morning. Tell Tyler and the rest of the gang down there, uh, Oceana, uh, to give 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 her a pet, and tell Leslie we said hey, and we'll we'll talk with you soon. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a good trip.
Take All care. right, buddy. Take care. Yeah, he's got a cool cat. Oceana, their cat. Really? Yeah. Just a really just. I mean, I'm okay with cats. They're they're. I'm fine with them. I'm kind of a dog guy more than a cat guy, but it's like it's a pretty cool cat. Really? Yeah, and they take it with them everywhere they go. They take. take Is it a six-toed cat? No, that'd be neat if it was though. A Hemingway cat. A Hemingway cat. Well, guys and gals, we're going to be right back with the last segment of Catch Your Memory. Right after these messages, we got to talk about your turkey hunt. We got to get to that. So after these messages, we will. A turkey. You're tuning in every Saturday right here to Catch Your Memory Outdoors. This segment of the show is brought to you by Strike Zone down in Melbourne. And if you haven't seen Strike Zone lately, you need to stop in because they have got a ton of new stuff in there. And they've got some of the hottest, latest, and greatest. So uh, check them out down there on 192 in Melbourne. Uh, the next time you're looking for any kind of fish and tackle or apparel to get out on the water. Tell them you heard about it right here on Catch Your Memory. Richard, you know, we've been talking about a variety of things today, but we we didn't get a chance to talk about your turkey hunt. Okay, so you, okay. So, so you are a a later, you know, later in life. I'm, I'm 62 years old, and, and I'm changing over so to— So what's like, happened here is, is you, you know as well, we have all these clients for all these years. Right. And every right. one of them that has a piece of property says, hey, if you ever get up our way— you know, I got some great hunting, and I don't hunt. I've never hunted. I, my father never got me into hunting, uh, so I just never felt the need. And then all of a sudden, as I'm starting to think, you know, Richard, how many years are you going to guide, and you need to start taking people up on some of this stuff? So I have uh, this uh Well, client. and there was also the gateway drug, if you will. You started shooting. Yeah. And then shooting led, led into to hunting. hunting. Right. So, so that's the funny thing is, is, you know, we've always done pistols and all for self-defense. And I, I have had rifles and, and different things, but never really have uh, went into it. But it seems like somewhere around 2014 or something like that, we um, we started thinking about an AR and, and maybe a little more, more significant guns. And that kind of led into it. Yes. But, anyways, Lee, Lee, this this guy, he has just this massive farms that he takes care of, and in in Missouri, and he kept saying, "You need to come up and go." And he showed me pictures, and I'm like, and he, I'm like, no, Lee. And I just two years ago, I said, Lee, I think I'm, I think I'm going to come up and hunt. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going to do this. But I, I, he says, don't bring anything. He says, if you do anything, just bring some camouflage stuff. And, uh, and I got the guns and everything for you. So I, I was a little apprehensive about it. Uh, so he took me out in his field and let me shoot his $2,500 shotgun, you know, <laughs> and, and make sure I could do this. And I was like, yeah, he says, you're good. You're good to go. And, uh, so we wait, we, we woke up in the morning on his 3000 acres behind his house and, took off on his little ranger and before at 4 45 in the morning and then we just sat looking into an old cornfield that had already been harvested it was really more of a food plot cornfield uh but he's got heavy equipment so he really puts food plots right out. right and we sat there and it, it wasn't 10 minutes uh we heard you know Right behind me, literally a hundred feet behind me, I heard, you know, gobble. I was like, "Holy cow!" I never heard, I never really heard that before. So he's he's kind of smiling, sitting next to me, and and we must have heard, I think, thirteen or fourteen turkeys in the tree lines around us, and we started calling him in, and he he got to respond, and we never could call in the turkeys to us which was surprising in a way but we called in some jakes some younger mm -hmm. turkeys mm -hmm. and they didn't you know they just didn't intrigue me so i was like okay we can have a couple more days here uh, holy cow what what an experience you got to watch the the turkeys come out of the trees flat of the trees into the fields uh in the morning uh, and and make all their cool noises so i i I didn't, I, I was being patient. Uh, I could have taken any number of, of smaller turkeys. And the and the gobblers that we did see were just outside. Of, of, just past shooting range. 
cor- correct, and and I was very patient. And of course, the more I got into it, the more I thought, you know, this is really you're not here for me. You're here to to do this and and enjoy the the experience. So you know what's crazy is we went to another field a few miles away that he does giant place. And um, we're going on a dirt road through his farming area. And, uh, and on this tree line, I go, holy smokes, look at that. There's a gobbler right there and, and hens and all. And he's doing his spinning around thing and all. Doing the dance. He, he, doing the dance. He was strutting. And uh, Lee pulls over to the side of the road. And I jump out with a shotgun. And I lay down on the there. And I'm kind of doing a belly crawl. And he just kind of. Lee comes up behind me and he says, so this is how you want to do it, huh? I'm like, what do you mean? He says, you just want to crawl up, pull out of a, a car, a truck, and shoot yourself a turkey. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of dirty sounding now. You sound, you know, <laughs> you, you, you say, he says, you're legal because you're far enough off the road and everything. You could do this if you want to, but, you know, and I, I got, and I'm so glad he stopped me because, I mean, I could have, in in yeah. 15 more seconds, I could have shot my, me the biggest turkey. He said it was a big turkey. Yeah. So we, we he, to his credit, we pulled back. We drove all the way around the tree line, and we come from another angle and walked, and then we got about 100 yards away and started calling, and the turkey came to a certain point, and then he said, no, I'm more interested in these hens back here behind me. And we didn't shoot one that afternoon. But the best experience with it was with his wife. His wife, the last morning, said, waking you up at 445, you're going out behind the property, we can kill one. And she was, she just flat out put it, put the rules down. So I woke up in the morning. I put on Lee's vest. Lee has all these stuff. He sound, It's like a voodoo vest. It's got all this stuff all over it. It's kind of like the tackle box that, you and I probably carry that around that wear. Yeah. everything on it. Uh, and then the little pillow that you sit on, it yep. was flapping back on the back of my legs. And she put that thing up and buttoned it up. She took off about everything off, off the vest. So you don't need any of that stuff. And then, um, she, she was dressed perfect. And she, we drove out. She got me up against a tree with no cover in in against the cornfield and we were sitting there and she says i want you to shut up don't make a move and um and and sit there and she um we sat there and before it, it kind of took her by surprise the owls started going yeah. off and then that and then turkey started you know following the Talk, owls talking talking back, back to, to the yeah. owls and that was amazing and she says she says, you know, I haven't been out this year. We, we don't always hunt turkeys. And she said, this was amazing. And, um, and she says, just be quiet and it'll all happen. And we had a, a turkey come out of the trees behind us into the field, but not quite. And he, he kind of went into another tree line. We must have had, you know, 15 jakes come into the picture. She says, you're going to take a jake. She says, I'm going to get you a turkey. She said, you can choose one of these jakes, and it'll be a good first turkey for you. And I didn't do it. I, yeah. I just didn't want to do it. And it's, I probably should have. Well, but everything it, you just described was not a harvest. But look at the memories you created, it, and look at the experience. One of Sitting the, in the woods yes. in the pitch black and listening to that owl fire off and listening to that Turkey's. turkey on the roost respond to him. That is it, some of the neatest things happen, but you never harvested the animal. We had we had yeah. gobblers, you know, 60, 70 yards out doing their thing, and we just couldn't call them in, and it it, it worked. It, it was the it it was a great experience. Did, did, did you enjoy every second of it? More more so than exactly. Yeah, just about exactly. anything I've done. It's yeah. uh, you know. The fishing experience, the hunting experience, isn't always about what you put on ice, you know, what mm-hmm. you got to clean at the end of the day. It's everything that led up to that. 
Oh yeah, that's that's really the experience. And, and it what really wasn't about the meat. It's not like I mean you, you're going to get a couple of breasts out of it. And uh, from what I understand, the turkey legs on wild turkeys aren't the. No, no, they're not worth chewing on. No, and so uh, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'll come back next year, and and if we don't get uh, get it next year, I'm fine. I could I could sit in these woods and let ticks get all over me. I it was just a great <laughs> great experience. <laughs> Yeah, it's it really, you know, being in the woods in the morning or being on the water in the morning, it's it's so invigorating. Well, you you know, we were talking to Mike Mann and he said we're seeing tail and redfish. Uh isn't it fun in the in the morning you and I with our level of experience and and time spent on the water just watching fish tail. Just watch them do what they do. I, I, you don't even have to fish for them. I was watching snook, just a school of snook just floating in the surf. Yeah the other day just up floating on top and it was like man this is it's peaceful it was really neat to just watch them just watch them yeah well guys and gals we hope you enjoyed today's show captain richard is a longtime friend uh one of the best guides in the area even though you are winding down a little bit um but you know you still get out there and take i'll take a few people on here and there on call uh 321 8684953 8684953 and of course it's lagooner.com l a g o o n e r.com and give me a chance to go fishing with you for the next couple of years until I decide so you I'm, fully retire. Well, I'm got a sprinter van and she's saying let's get out of here so we might go to Alaska. There Who knows? Go. There you go. Well, guys and gals, till next week, do exactly what we're going to do. Get out there and catch yourselves a memory.